All right, so I started taking the dirt out of these beds in order to get to the uh, cloth that's on the bottom. I brought out a hoe and a shovel and a garden rake. And to be honest with you, the garden rake is doing a fine job. It only took me about mm, less than five minutes to get this one end right here down to the uh, cloth. And I don't have to take it all the way off because I found that once, you know, you get a pretty good edge of it and some of it knocked down that it just pulls up pretty easy. Now, one of the things I want to mention before I put this on time lapse and let you watch me do this. When you are working outside, even on a day that it's only 80 degrees, make sure you are staying hydrated. Now, I keep these. These are just old. Uh, I got Gatorade and Powerade. This is not a promo. This is just me saying when I used to drink Gatorade and Powerade, I saved all the bottles and these are several years old and I use them for long distance hiking and I use them for working around the house. But I keep probably about six of these in the refrigerator. And then every other one, I put powdered electrolytes in it. Um, that will keep your energy up. That will keep you from feeling fatigued while you're outside working. And it'll replenish all of the salts and things that your body loses from sweating. And uh, it will actually keep you from being less sore, believe it or not. So anyway, stay hydrated. Always keep one of these bottles with you when you're outside. You know, if you're doing hard work, this is a 32 ounce bottle. You should be drinking one of these every hour or two. So I just wanted to bring that up because you know all of us talk about working outside in our gardens and stuff but do it in a safe way you know some of us are getting up there in age and uh only takes one mistake and you may not be recovering from it right anyways let me go ahead and get this on time lapse i'll let you watch me do this you know the real reason why i want you all to stay hydrated is because i want you all to be around so you can watch my videos so uh, just uh, keep it safe, stay hydrated when you're outside working. So I got the first bed done and uh, it basically took 16 or 17 minutes. Um, heart rate's up a little bit. You can see there, 130 to 129. Dropping because I've uh, stopped doing the hard work. But yeah, so this is what this clay looks like under this bed. And let me just tell you, it is hard as a rock. Let me, let me kind of show you why I had the raised beds to begin with. So this is a garden rake. Like, look. It's not even like barely hitting the ground. I mean, barely, barely even digging up the ground and I'm swinging out with some force. <laughs> and it's wet. If it was dry, it would literally be hard as a rock. Let me show you out here in this, in the center part because it's kind of dried off today. Even though we had some rain, this is the other thing too. See how it cracks? And it'll get big cracks, wide cracks. It'll get cracks inch wide you can stick your whole entire fingers down in them see that and then under where it's cracking at it'll be wet again this is so hard like it's almost like a rock so that's why I did the raised beds to begin with but now that I have built up you know, the soil from the bed, all the uh, matter and stuff that was in the walkways from the decaying uh, wood chips. I'm gonna try to mix that in and uh, just start to improve this clay soil. Um, again, you know, from the beginning of the video, I said that I kind of built the spaces between the beds too wide. And, you know, there was three foot all the way around at the end of each bed, three foot between each bed, 
three foot at the tops of the beds three foot or big bigger at the bottom of the beds and i just had all that wasted space three six nine twelve fifteen fifteen foot of wasted space going uh left to right in the camera and three six nine actually this in here was wider this is four and six ten and ten foot going left to right in the camera frame now I have no idea what you actually see yeah so it's 10 foot in the width and 3 6 9 12 15 foot in the length that was just wasted space so I wanted to recover that um, and just hope and pray that you know I might have to bring in I've, I've got some really big compost piles and a lot of rabbit poop and a lot of goat you know the goat barns need cleaned out and that sort of thing so i got a lot more material i'm gonna add to this because i don't plan on planting anything this year and you know that was kind of my goal was to get the garden back in good shape so anyways i'm just rambling so back to work All right, so I have all of the beds disassembled and the soil removed and the uh, weed barrier removed from the bottoms of the beds. It took me about 30 minutes per bed to uh, break them down, move the soil out of the way using a garden rake and pull up the weed barrier fabric and then spread the soil back out so that way when i till this side of the garden to level all this out that it will uh, work out pretty well so one of the things i wanted to show you though is you know the soil that i use in the raid raised beds it's it's really a good soil i mean it's your typical soil now this has been in here you know i have to put new soil in it every year but for the most part some of the soil's been in here six years. Some of it's only been in here about two years. Um, it clumps up really good. The problem is, at least in Kentucky, so east is over there, and west is over there, and in the summertime, literally the sun, and I'm going to try to do this where you can see it, literally the sun is directly overhead and part of the biggest reason that i'm doing this is i'm on cistern water now i did have drip irrigation set up you can see all the hose here where i just kind of moved it out of the way for right now because i'm probably going to reuse it i'm going to have to reconfigure it but it literally goes around and feeds every one of these beds you can see it more clearly over here but the problem becomes for people that are on like city and county water, you have an unlimited water supply. And for people that are on rural property, that are on a cistern or a well, your water supply is good in the spring when it's a lot of rain and not very good in June, July, and August when the rains are few and far between. So part of the problem I was having was when my garden needed water the most, I would run out. <laughs> and you know there's a guy that will haul water out here but it's like a hundred and fifteen dollars for 1500 gallons and uh that's what it was the last time i bought it about three years ago so i'm sure it's way more now that gas prices are sky high he's in a great big ford f750 truck and i just know that his rates have gone up due to the gas prices Anyways, so I think that I've got enough soil to mix in with this clay. First, let me back up because I just skipped a part. <laughs> the, uh, the issue becomes that as great as this soil is, that in Kentucky with the sun overhead of it, it doesn't hold moisture with the sun beating down on it all day. And I use straw in all my beds. If you watch my channel very long, you know I use straw in everything. 
and even with straw I would still have trouble keeping the plants watered not only that this soil doesn't seem like it retains nutrients at all like I was having to use way more fertilizer than what I would have to use in like an in-ground garden which is what I'd always had many years before I ever moved here on this homestead I always had in-ground gardens and then because of this heavy clay soil I switched over to above ground when literally I couldn't even get the ground tilled uh, the first year I was here my tiller wouldn't even make a dent in this ground it it literally took me and I, I took this is before I started doing YouTube videos and the garden was going to be in the same place it is now so I started down there on that corner with my tiller and for me to make it to about right there which is only three quarters of the way took nearly 12 hours one pass I didn't even make it to the end in one whole day so it was going to take me and now part of that was rocks there's literally a pile of rocks over here that is oh I don't know 10 feet in diameter and maybe four feet tall three feet tall and that's just the rocks that I got from that one pass not even a whole pass so the next thing I tried you know I got a pretty beefy garden tractor it's a uh, 25 horsepower um, with ag tires on it so I got me a Brindley uh, single mold board board plow and it would actually dig down about three inches in the soil no problem but just that heavy clay and so many rocks it, it was just a nightmare so the garden tractor would get stuck even with ag tires on it so then I switched it over I actually modified with a welder <laughs> in a grinder i took and modified the mount for my garden tractor to fit on my atv and i used the atv to plow this whole section um, which probably took about a half a day and then i think later on that evening it rained and if you know anything about clay as soon as clay gets wet wet it kind of like levels back out and turns hard as a rock again so all that work i'd done to get this plowed up literally the first time it rained it was right back the way it was when i started so i got mad and that's when i actually started looking into raised beds now the first year i had raised beds i didn't have the drip irrigation system and man it was a bear to even keep those plants alive the first year with you know hand water and everything and using a garden hose and I'd have to kind of limit the amount so I didn't run out of water but so then I went with the drip irrigation system now the first year I went with the drip irrigation system that's probably the best garden that I ever had but I was kind of in this money's no object I'm gonna make this work I don't care what it costs and I, I think I had to get water two or three times that summer just because you know I was running the drip irrigation system like every other day for I think 15 minutes per bed um, yeah so it, it was just you know with when you add in the fact that the water that the soil doesn't hold water very well you can kind of see it right here the soil doesn't hold water very well it doesn't hold nutrients very well so if i mix it with this clay soil i think that's going to solve all of the problems and i'm still occasionally finding these tags but anyways i'm going to go ahead and start on this side i'm probably not going to do it in slow motion because i am working shirtless which is something that i very seldom do but it's 90 degrees today i do have my water sitting over there staying hydrated with electrolytes in it so i'll bring you back probably i'll do some uh, slow motion when i actually start tilling this it's probably going to be a couple days it's probably going to take me the rest of today um, to get this done i don't actually intend to plant anything in this garden this year if i can get it all done and tilled and leveled out and kind of where i want it i may plant some sunflowers just so that i can let them grow up and then uh, 
die back down and those roots will rot in the ground and provide nutrients for next year so i may do that i have plenty of sunflower seeds and uh we'll just see what happens All right, so at this point, I basically have all of the beds tore down. I have all of the weed fabric barrier tore up. This right here, this corner going down along this edge was the last that I did. It actually, for whatever reason, ended up being the hardest part. Um, I ended up taking the bed apart that had the onions and just sticking them in a grow uh, container, one of those fabric containers. I think it's a 15 gallon I got off of Amazon. They're pretty nice. Um, I had a bunch of them set up here in this corner. I needed a few for another project I got coming up and then I emptied some of the other ones which they had all kinds of mito corze in them. You can see it right here in this. If I get out of the, see all the white in that soil? That is all fungus, the good kind of fungus. And they were just full of it. All the ones, all those containers I tore down see it part of that is probably because I used great white in them for the plants that I initially had in there the first year I used them I'll link to that too great white is a great thing to have but let me get back to this so the next thing I have to do is I've got to get this leveled out the best I can using a garden rake and then once it's leveled out the best I can I'll have to take a tiller uh, probably my big gas tiller and till all this in and then let it get rained on a couple of times and till it again and level it I'll probably have to do that a couple of different times this corner up here the reason why it was so hard and I never really thought about that. And it could actually be one of the reasons why that my raised beds weren't doing that great. All those trees found this better soil. This bed right here especially, and the bed that was right here, they were just clear full of tree roots. I'm, I'm talking like the, the plants that were in there couldn't have been getting too many nutrients that many roots thousands of roots in this bed over here of course i covered them up when i put the uh, fabric or put the soil back down kind of see some of them over there there's literally just thousands of roots and uh anyway so that's where we're at that's going to be the next step Get it leveled out best I can by hand. Get it tilled in. Get it leveled out again. Let it get rained on a few times. That's basically what I'm going to be doing all summer. 
once it rains a couple of times on it i'll have to come out here re, you know retill it to loosen the soil level it back out again with the places that are indicated by the rain that need you know it's either a high spot or a low spot until i finally get it all leveled then by next year it should be a pretty good place to to grow anyways that's all for now